Is there a terror cell linking the Ohio State attack to this radical mosque? right behind me. We're about one mile away from University campus where the latest ISIS attack on U.S. soil has just taken place. And this mosque, which describes itself as the Muslim heart of Columbus, Ohio, has also been described as one of the most hard line in the city. This Columbus mosque has been linked to not one, not two, but six cases of terrorism, some of which have included OSU students committing the attacks and others where they were the victims. For starters, the mosque has been connected to the Columbus Al-Qaeda cell. That's one of the largest known Al-Qaeda cells since 9-11. Only three of the members of that cell were actually charged, but get this, all three of them are known to have attended this mosque and actually lived just up the street. And one of the three started a sister mosque also in Columbus, Ohio. The mosque was also a spiritual home to the Little Rock Killer, who was found to be a member just before he was convicted of murdering Army Private Andy Long. And it doesn't stop there. The mosque was also connected to Dr. Salah Sultan. He's one of the top Islamic scholars in the United States, and he's currently in prison facing a death sentence on terrorism charges in Egypt. But here's where things get really eerie. Also connected to this mosque were four men who were charged in 2015 for operating as part of an Anwar al Awlaki terrorist funding cell. Does that name sound familiar? Well, it should. He's a Yemeni American cleric who called for unrelenting attacks against the U.S. al was also mentioned by name in Abdul Artan's terrorist note that he left on his Facebook page just before unleashing havoc on OSU campus. And get this, all four of the men indicted were previously Ohio State students. And the OSU radical mosque connections, well, they don't end there. In 2009, Ohio State student Rachel Decker was stabbed in the stomach while waiting for a bus to take her to school. Her attacker was a man by the name of Wail Kalash. Now, right after the incident, he fled and went into hiding. Well, guess where police found him? That's right, in the walls just behind me. And if you're not yet convinced about the suspicious going-ons in this mosque, three of its members were found to have been recruited to ISIS in 2014, one of which was recently taken out by a U.S. airstrike. Now, I reached out to the president of this mosque to ask him if Abdul Artan had ever been seen on this mosque's grounds, to which he replied that he was not a member and, to his knowledge, Abdul Artan never attended this mosque. He then declined an interview with us at the rebel.media, but I, for one, am not convinced. Mosque President Basil Gohar's claims about known terrorists in the past, well, they've been dubious at best. He once defended Christopher Paul, who was also a member of his mosque, who later pleaded guilty to conspiring to use weapons of mass destruction against Americans. Gohar said that he hoped that Paul's jail time would elevate his place in paradise. And just after Gohar made those comments, well, the U.S. Justice Department released federal findings that said that they believed that Al-Qaeda had been running training sessions inside the mosque. We've tried to get some comment from folks who have been milling about over here. No one will talk. No one will tell us whether or not they have seen Abdul within these walls. I'm not trying to connect dots. All I'm saying is that these are the facts that are known to date. What we do know is this. This mosque is, has been connected to six known terrorist events and terrorist cells. And this mosque is also one mile away from the university campus that has just become the grounds for the Islamic State's most recent attack on U.S. soil. For the Rebel Dawn Media, I'm Faith Goldie. Like what you just saw, this is a story angle that no one in the MSN dared to bring you. Only us at the Rebel.media, and we are funded 100% by you, the viewers. If you want to get involved, visit OhioJihad.com and become part of the team.